Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, actually a couple days ago, well, yesterday at the time of recording of this video, we got yet another development blog. I guess it's just that time of the month when they're just ready to dump out all these announcements on us. And this one's one that a lot of us have been waiting a quite a very long time for, and that is finally some more unique upgrades. It's been, good lord, uh, forever I think since the last batch of unique upgrades came to the game. Uh, I'm going to do a quick Google search here. I think it's been well over, um, what, shoot, um, I would say at least two years since we've gotten the last set of unique upgrades. Um, I think they were changed in, um, was it 9.5? Yeah, so it's been about two years since we've gotten new upgrades or new well, changes to these upgrades. Yeah, okay, 9.5 was the last time. It looks like they were changed. I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments section uh, below if that is not the case. Okay, so yeah, it's been about two years since the last change to these, and that wasn't new upgrades being added. Those are just the existing ones being changed, I believe, in preparation for the Commander rework. But yeah, we got a new set of unique upgrades that are coming out soon. So the Venezia, the Holland, the Petra Pavlovsk, the uh, Manfred von Richthofen, the Vermont, the Cristoforo Colombo, the Elbing, the Golden Loot, and the Nakamov, I shudder at the thought of that, are all getting unique upgrades. So this dev blog doesn't say what the upgrades are, just that these ships are getting upgrades. And because of that, these clones of these ships are being added into the game so that they can test out these upgrades. So the clones are the... Ravenna for the Venezia. You guys know I'm going to murder these pronunciations, so I apologize in advance to all nations involved in this that I'm about to insult. Sodermanland for the Holland. Petrozavodsk. 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 Whatever. For the Petropavlovsk. Otto Lilithal for the Richthofen. New Hampshire for the Vermont. Amerigo Vespucci for the Cristoforo Colombo, Lubeck for the Elbing. This isn't a word. <laughs> no way is this a word. Rijhide, Rijhide, Rijhide for the Golden Lou, and Admiral Orlov for the Nakimov. God, um, Netherlands. I, I am. I'm sorry. Your language is just like they. They took the, the Elvish dialogue from Lord of the Rings straight out of. Um, uh, 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 you guys' language because it's it wow so okay exciting news new unique upgrades unique upgrades are cool because there's many of us in the game that have played this game for years now and we've got pretty much either all the ships in the game or at least the ships that we want and these unique upgrades are pretty cool the old ones are at least they either fortify the ship's characteristics a little bit more or they add in another unique play style to the ship in one upgrade um out of the current ones the only ones i would recommend you guys go for because they do cost research bureau points now so it's a bit heftier of an investment. They used to, well, they used to be called legendary modules, and you used to get them just by playing the ship. You'd earn base XP on the ship, and eventually you'd get the legendary module for the ship, but then they changed them to unique upgrades. And for the ones that are currently available right now, uh, at least for battleships, I can, I can speak with most authority on this one. The only one really worth getting is the Yamato's one, because you get an additional boost to your ship's dispersion, and you slap that on top of the um, aiming module, and you get like a 17% buff to your dispersion. What was really fun was unique upgrade Yami, aiming systems Yami, plus Deadeye Yami, all in one. Shells didn't move during flight. That that was a fun time fun time indeed but yeah they usually offer either um that or kind of an alternative play style for the ship with the 
Montana's legendary or unique upgrade, it kind of makes it into Zombie Montana. It helps take down the time for fire and flooding recovery to where you have Zombie Montana, so it takes the tankiness of Montana to the next level. And then couple that with the buff that the Montana got to her repair party, you really do have a zombie ship on your hands there. Uh, the GK's unique upgrade, it's really not worth it, especially in today's meta. It cranks down the reload time of both your main battery and your disper and your dispersion. And your secondary modules, which sure, it's cooler having a quicker reload time on your main battery and your secondaries at the same time, but it takes your range down to 18 kilometers as well. And as we know, in today's World of Warships, that is far from, my, from an ideal range on a tier 10 battleship. That's quite close and doesn't really happen too much at higher tier. So I would recommend, in the GK's case, just going for a full secondary build and, you know, just full set into those secondaries and let's have at it. So these ships, what could they be? Well, the Venezia, I could see maybe her having a longer smoke time, maybe, or um, maybe a decreased DPM at the cost of range. Uh, the Holland, maybe building more into the torpedoes because the, the Pan Euro DDs are kind of like a hybrid type deal so maybe we could have this module that could crank down the torpedo reload speed even more and maybe focus more on the torpedo aspect of them and make them just you know torpedo vomiters Petra Pavlovsk I have no clue because it's well you can't really turn down I guess you could turn down the flooding and fire times of the Petro to kind of build into her tankiness which would make sense. Maybe it's something to rein in that dispersion on the main battery guns, but at the cost of reload time, because if you guys haven't played the Patra Pavlos recently, good luck hitting anything outside of 13 kilometers, uh, 13 kilometers with those guns. Maybe we can, you know, get something that will increase the dispersion, sorry, decrease the dispersion, but at the cost of reload and maybe turret traverse as well. Uh, the Richtofen. Hmm. That's an interesting one. I'm not really too much in CV, so I don't think I could say much about that. Maybe secondary build Richtofen? That'd be funny. I don't think so. Probably like, uh, shoot. Maybe the speed for the aircraft, because the German CVs, they have the fast planes, but the low HP and armor. So I think that would probably be what they're going for here. The Columbo uh, dispersion. Please give this thing something that will crank down its dispersion. Even at the cost of reload time, I think it would be neat. Or maybe something that will give it a buff to its reload time at the cost of even more dispersion. You know, just full sin, full shotgun build, Columbo. Elbing? Um, I'm thinking probably DPM. Get the DPM down a little bit more on those guns, those sweet, sweet guns. Although I think they'll be going to, like, busted territory. Maybe at the cost of uh, rudder shift time or something like that, or detection. Uh, the Golden Lion. Um, hmm. What could they do here? Maybe main battery accuracy because the the ship doesn't have the best accuracy ever, especially at range, which is why most Golden Lion players just stick to slinging HE, which is actually pretty darn good at. Maybe that again, like with the Petro, at the cost of uh, turret traverse time and reload time, or they could maybe go for like a super maneuverable. Tier 10 Scharnhorst, give it an increased rudder shift time, or a decreased rudder shift time, or something like that. And the Nakamov, I don't know how, that ship's already busted. How could you make it even better or a side grade? Maybe focus on one of the three um, attacking squadrons? Maybe really going fully into the skip bombers? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they, what they could do with the Nakabomb, because again, that's like the easiest CV to use once you get the hang of it, and it's so easy to, to do just mountains of damage and kills in the Nakabomb. Even I'm a good... Well, I wouldn't say good. I'm halfway decent in Nakamov compared to my other CV play. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited that we're finally getting some new unique upgrades. I'm very interested to hear what they might become. So, we'll be sticking around and take uh, keeping our ears peeled for more information about that. Uh, one last thing before we go, released today, actually, we finally know what some of these new ships are going to be released for. Again, link to both of these are in the description down below. Neither of them are very uh, long dev blocks i didn't bother to read directly from them all right so trump is going to be available for coal hector is going to be available for research points uh well trump by the way that that's the dutch um 
destroyer that has airstrikes. Hector is the upcoming Commonwealth cruiser. Uh, Brisbane, which is apparently how you're supposed to say Brisbane, apparently. I've heard it everywhere in the United States and on TV. It's called Brisbane, but apparently it's Brisbane. Sorry, kangaroos. That's going to be available for coal. That is the um, Australian well, well, Commonwealth Minotaur. And then the Z-42, the German Harugamo, basically, will be available for steel. That's the... Um, was it what, what is it Z forty four Z thirty nine that has um, a bunch of what one oh fives? She's got um, was it is it ten one oh five turrets or is it ten one oh fives all together? I think it's ten one oh fives. Yeah, I guess ten one oh five turrets. That'd be twenty one oh fives. Yeah, it's ten one oh fives all together, and she's got like Harugamo DPM out of those one oh five. So she's going to be available for steel. So that's what we know about those ships so far and what they're going to be available for. Uh, I don't think any big surprises here. I am very happy to see that Brisbane is coming out for coal and not research points. That makes me very happy. Um, I was sure they were going to stick her in either the research points or for steel. And I'm very glad that she's coming out for coal. That makes it accessible to everyone way, way, way more so than uh, getting stuck in the research bureau or being stuck in steel land. So, let me know you guys think about this in the comments down below. I'm very excited for the unique upgrades, like I said already. Uh, new ships. Um, I am surprised they put Z42 in uh, the steel place. Um, and then in, in the still placeholder because I, I thought for sure that would be like a coal ship or a research bureau ship. That is one that did throw me for a loop there. But, yep. Um, pretty pl pleasant news all the way around. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. One way to 45,000 subscribers now, thanks to you guys. Again, the giveaway will be commencing on Tuesday. And, by the way, you only need to comment on Monday's video. Don't go through and comment on every video every day of the week. The bots are only going to be looking at the comments in Monday's video. I've seen you guys have been going uh, up and down the, the videos during this week and putting in the applications there for the contest. Don't worry about doing that. Just once a Monday's video, make sure you're subscribed and you're in it for the giveaway. So again, guys, thank you guys for watching so much. Hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday, one for the rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.